Here are 45 ways to simplify your life that you have to try or if you just want to. There are quite a few videos and articles on this topic so I've tried to come up with something a little bit different. Take what is applicable for you and simply leave the rest. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare so a massive thank you to them but we'll talk about them just a little bit later on. Go through your phone and delete apps that you don't use. Organize all your essential apps on your home screen and move those that you want to limit to the next screen so that you have to actively swipe to get to them. Causing a little bit of friction makes a big difference. Grayscale your phone. You can set this up with a shortcut if you need to quickly toggle back between color and grayscale. By reducing the sensory input, we can reduce the appeal and addictiveness of our screens. This has been a game changer for me. Whenever I need to switch back to color temporarily, I find it a bit overwhelming. Unsubscribe from email lists that don't serve you. I did this for any companies showing me their latest items or new fashion to prevent me from spending money outside of my strict budget. Replace your smartphone for a brick phone if you don't need all of those extras. Turn off all but essential notifications. Ask yourself whether you really need to take your smartphone with you somewhere, the bedroom, on a walk, to the shops. Technology companies have done a great job of convincing us that we can't possibly go without certain apps, but could you? Would you feel better if you did? Have a separate alarm clock if this is accessible to you. This means that you don't have to have your phone in your bedroom, you're less likely to check it last thing at night and you won't be able to first reach for it in the morning when you wake up. Slim down your contacts. This may seem brutal, but if there are people in your contact list that you know you'll never be in touch with again, it's time to let them go. Set boundaries. Choose a time or a few times a day when you wanna spend your time on your phone. It doesn't matter how much or how often you want to do this, but the point is to avoid the infinite scroll. Check your pickups. This will be different for non-iPhone users, but you can see this in their settings and screen time and see all activity. Having this data is incredibly illuminating. Put your phone in a drawer or somewhere out of sight and immediate reach. I tried this and was amazed how much less I picked up my phone. For me, it's, it's not so much the amount of time I spend on my phone. It's the fact that I wanted to reduce how much I actually check it. If I am consciously and intentionally using it for two hours, then fine. But I don't want my brain to associate every free moment as an opportunity to check my phone. Once you pick it up, it, it's hard to put it down, so try to pick it up less if possible. Tell your friends and family, if they wanna get in touch with you, then it's better to call unless they don't mind waiting for a response. Besides, a phone call allows you to connect with someone in a way that texting just doesn't. We have a small joke in my family now that whenever my brother texts us, if we don't reply immediately, he just sends Immy? Question mark? <laughs> Maybe he could do with a little bit of practicing understanding other people's priorities. Change your brain's default by substituting a behavior, i.e. every time you wanna pick up your phone, have an alternative behavior that you would rather be doing instead. For example, practice mindfulness for two minutes or carry a book or magazine with you for those snatched free moments. I often do this when I'm waiting for a train to London and I inevitably arrive 10 minutes too early. Before we move on to number 14, I wanna talk about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Learning new skills has helped me to simplify my life in a multitude of ways. And one of those ways is simply getting better at the things I love to do. And one of those things is creating YouTube videos for you. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring and creative classes for anyone who loves learning. So I've been investing in myself and my personal growth. I'm a big fan of Marcus Brownlee, so when I realized that he had done a class himself on YouTube success, how to script, shoot, and edit, I immediately wanted to check it out. And by taking his class, I was able to see how I could shoot my videos better, how to edit my footage and make more engaging videos for you. If you're interested in learning a new skill, then the first 1,000 of my viewers to sign up through the link in the description will get one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Embrace boredom. I recently read in a book called Dopamine Nation that by embracing boredom and limiting those dopamine hits we get when we receive a like on Instagram, we can actually get more in touch with who we are, how we feel about things. It can be daunting, but sitting with your own thoughts can really bring things out that you might have been avoiding. If you find this very difficult, try to concentrate on the sound and, and feeling of your breath. 
embrace silence. We all know that I love silence if you watch this channel, but my sister, for example, definitely has a habit of listening to something when she is cooking or cleaning. This isn't a bad thing, but just as with embracing boredom, we can find some peaceful moments when we stop feeling like our brain needs constant stimulation. We may find that we have better ideas and can think more clearly as a result. I certainly have found this to be the case. Ask yourself who or what deserves your attention. Big companies are constantly vying for our attention online in this so-called attention economy. Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, all want to keep you on their platforms for as long as possible. And they design their platforms to that end. Try reducing your TV options. I often find it overwhelming to choose something to watch on a streaming platform because there is just simply so much choice and I worry, am I missing out on the best shows? I like to occasionally ask a friend or a member of family if they have watched something recently that they would recommend. And I try to just go for their recommendations, as long as we have similar tastes. Along the same lines as number 17, I would also recommend reducing your options in other areas. For example, pick a few albums to listen to and rotate them, or it could be to do with meals that you're eating. I can also feel overwhelmed by the number of podcasts there are available, so I stick to a few regular ones that I always enjoy, like Hidden Brain. Reject FOMO. No one can keep up with the amount of books and music, articles, films, and TV shows that are being churned out in the 21st century. While it's great that access has opened up so that so many more people can make a podcast or self-publish a book, the market is saturated. Limit the media you consume to those that are meaningful to you and reject the idea that you are missing out if you haven't watched the latest Netflix show or you haven't read the most popular book of 2022. I learned that the long and boring way. Leave your headphones at home. This is one I like to do sometimes not all the time, just to reset. If I'm on the bus, for example, or walking to the shop, I find that by not listening to something, I take much more notice of what's around me. Even if you live in a concrete jungle, being present and noticing what's around you can be a great anchoring tool. Why not have a go at writing handwritten letters to friends and family? Receiving a handwritten letter is such a special thing as it shows that someone has really taken the time to communicate with you. It allows time away from screens and it's something that other people can keep. There is also something very personal about seeing someone's handwriting in a letter. Being in a long distance relationship, my partner and I have sent countless letters and cards to one another over the past eight years. And it always makes me feel incredibly loved and thought of whenever I receive one even now. Handwrite things in general, if you have the ability to do so, like shopping lists or things that you need to remember. I find that sometimes when I put things on my phone, they just get completely forgotten and add stress to that item I was trying to get done. If you read the news, subscribe to a digest. This could be an email in your inbox or a weekly magazine that tells you everything that you might want to know. By containing your news consumption like this, you can reduce the sense that there is always more that you could know or there is always something else that you could be reading. Think of other ways that you might be able to reduce your options, if you find them overwhelming, that is. This may sound like a silly example, but someone gave my sister their old bike and it only has two gears. She initially thought that she might upgrade this, but now she she finds she loves the simplicity of two gears, even if it means it's much tougher up hills. If and when possible, don't check the time. I personally find that checking the time always makes me think of something I should be doing. It's not realistic to never look at the time, obviously, but perhaps be more mindful at how often you check, whether you really need to, and how it makes you feel when you do. This is coming from someone with limited responsibilities, so if this doesn't apply to you, please just don't take it. Sit down and listen to music and do nothing else. Concentrate on the lyrics if there are any, and just immerse yourself in the sounds. Stop rushing. This is easier said than done and usually involves planning or quite a lot of planning. But when you do have the opportunity, ask yourself this. How much of a difference would it really make if I were to spend just a few extra minutes on this task or activity? Would I feel more relaxed and therefore more able to take on the next task? Please remember as we're going through this to take what's applicable for you and simply leave the rest. There is only so much that we can do and this video is intended to offer you a multitude of options for you to choose from. So go ahead and like this video if you do and maybe consider subscribing as well. 
Arrive a few minutes early to meet friends or to appointments. This means you will be less likely to be rushing and you also might be able to have a spare 10 minutes to do something just for you, to read, to write, or just to simply sit there with your thoughts. Multitasking is a myth. Do one thing at a time. The more your brain switches between tasks, the less capable it is of maintaining concentration and focus. This doesn't apply to tasks that use different parts of the brain. However, for example, walking and talking wouldn't be considered multitasking. Be aware of how much you use the word should. Shoulds can fill our lives with extra activities and tasks that we might not actually need to do. And often it's to please other people. Visualize what you want your life to look like. What does the ideal weekend look for you? How does your working space look? How does your living space look? You could even get creative with this and write down or draw your answer. I'm not talking about law of attraction here. Visualization is a really powerful tool. Simplify your calendar. How much downtime do you need? Factor this into your schedule and have that time protected as much as you possibly can. Simple doesn't always mean less. In fact, it might mean more, but of the right things, like more time spent doing things that are meaningful to you. Be an outfit repeater and compile a capsule wardrobe. If you're not ready to declutter your closet, you can always do a trial run where you stick to a small number of pieces for a week or a month and, and see how you feel then you might be ready to leave things behind that aren't really serving you anymore. When buying new clothes, think about the pieces you wear all the time and why exactly it is that you like them. Is it the cut, the color, the material? If you know exactly what you like, you'll be more likely to buy something new that you'll definitely wear. If you wanna simplify your finances, assess all your direct debits and subscriptions. Lose the ones that you don't use or no longer want. Companies really rely on the fact that people can't be bothered to cancel subscriptions. So make sure that they are a conscious choice for you. Companies also create a lot of friction to make it more troublesome so that you eventually give up. Stick with it and make sure you're not paying for stuff you do not use. Switch to paperless billing if you haven't already. Set up direct debits or standing orders for regular payments that actually serve you. Automate your savings so it's the first thing that leaves your account when you get paid, i.e. the idea of paying yourself first. Try a regular no spend week or day or month, depending on your circumstances. Consolidate your accounts if you have several. This will make it so much easier to track your money and your actual spending habits. You can also do this with your pension if you have multiple because of diff having different jobs over the years. Try the one P saving challenge. On day one, you save one P, on day two, you save two P and so on. After 365 days, you will have saved 667 pounds and 95 pence. Meal planning is great, but it's not for everyone. Try putting together a capsule food cupboard with a few versions versatile ingredients that you're happy to eat regularly. While of course keeping in mind that variety is also important in your diet. Compile a list of your favorite recipes that you make on repeat and create a little cookbook, either digitally or a hard copy, so that you never have to go searching for that recipe online ever again. It's just right in front of you. It's honestly made my life a lot easier and simpler when it comes to mealtimes and it makes cooking a little less daunting because I already have a few recipes in my wheelhouse. Minimize the amount of kitchen tools you have. I find that the more I have, the more I use and the more cleaning there is to do. Cleaning always takes up so much of my time. So I opt to use only a few things and keep things nice and simple. I'd love to hear your ideas to simplify your life in the comments. And if you're looking for what to watch next, then maybe a hundred ways to reduce your food waste. Or if you want to watch my latest minimalism video, I just did a, I got rid of almost everything I own. So I'll leave that linked below. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want even more content, then check out my Patreon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.